Hello everybody, it is Tom and welcome to another video. So, hello. Hi. <laughs> I have just returned from getting my hair cut, which, as usual, went with me going in and saying, Hi, I would like to have it short on the sides and then just a little trim on the top. And as per usual, they got it short on the sides and then cut the crap out of the top of it. So, uh, the good news is hair grows and it's not, it doesn't look terrible, but it is shorter than I wanted it. But what you're going to do except pay more for a haircut, which I will not do because I am not a wealthy individual. Anyway, so here we are today back again to continue our look at the final episode of season two of Hardstopper. Perfect. So last time we looked at the beginning of the episode, which is a good place to start when you're watching an episode. Um, the last thing we saw was the gang showing up, rocking up to the prom Avengers style to uh, save Tara and Sahar and the prom committee <laughs> by assisting with preparations for that evening's prom. Uh, Darcy was still missing in action. Some folks at school were starting to ask about Nick and Charlie, whether or not they were going out. And we had Nick and Tao share a very wonderful conversation about Charlie and about Tao's dad passing away and how, you know, we can hold on to trauma for a really long time, stuff like that. And we ended with Nick having the realization that Charlie has literally talked to no one, not even his best friend, about the extent of the bullying that he suffered. I, I love how Nick is such like a Charlie detective through this whole season where like, He's putting the pieces together, figuring out what has brought Charlie to the mental state that he's at now, why he does the things he does, and, you know, trying to, obviously, from a perspective of loving him and wanting to, to help him through it. So, okay, so we're going to continue. Oh, God, how did it, how did it get tangled? Like, since I, I laid, since I laid these down three minutes ago and did not touch them, yet somehow they have spontaneously knotted themselves. Alright. Uh, now which one goes into which? I, I want to say this one goes into... This is, this is very good content. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, gang. It's time for the prom. Alright, so we have Nick looking impeccable in a lovely gray suit. And he does look a little anxious which is understandable given all that's going on. He's worried about Charlie. He's worried about how they'll be received at the prom. He's worried about how Charlie will react to how they're received at the prom. So there's a lot going on because this is really like his first haha -ha, outing. <laughs> but the first time that he's going out into the world of school with the undeniable fact that he is with Charlie. Can you close your eyes? <laughs> okay, so Charlie um, knocking on his own bedroom door, which, I mean, if Nick was getting changed, fair enough. Just opening the door a crack to ask Nick to close his eyes. Why? And Nick's like, why should I close my eyes? Because I'm nervous you think I'll look weird. <laughs> so Charlie, as usual, uh, very concerned about, you know, how he looks and how he's, you know, coming coming off to others. I'm not looking, but for the record, I think you always look cute. Correct. He does always look cute. Ah, <laughs> uh, I love it. So I'm a big fan of the bow tie. And Charlie in this, this adorable navy suit with the bow tie. A++. So Charlie walks in and poor Nick is just standing there with like his hand over his eye. I can't believe you're my boyfriend. And Charlie has a moment to just take him in and just marvel again at the fact that he and Nick are together, which I'm sure is not something he ever would have dreamed would happen back when they first met. Can I please open my eyes now? Aw, oh, Charlie, a self-conscious glance down at himself. <laughs> that, that doesn't look bad. Wonderful parallel here between uh, the scene in episode two of season one, where Charlie shows up at Nick's house having gotten his hair cut, and asks, does it look bad? You got a haircut. <laughs> Is it bad? No, no, you look, it looks great. In this case, we have the same situation where he says, you look, but this time 
he can be totally honest about his feelings and tell Charlie right out, you look so good. No, you look so good. You look so good. <laughs> Shut up. And Charlie kind of rolls his eyes, but I'm sure he's very pleased about, about that. We have a lovely hug. How about we don't go to prom? We just stay here instead. Now, I think this is like a half-joking suggestion. How about we just stay here? But he's also giving Charlie one final chance to back out, um, knowing... And, like, it's interesting that Nick, through this whole thing, has checked in with Charlie so many times to make sure he's really okay with them going to prom because he knows how stressed out Charlie has been about the whole them being out thing. And this is kind of the culmination of all that. Definitely makes sense that Charlie would be a little bit anxious about it. So Nick again being like, oh, we could we could just stay here. No, we have to go. Everyone's expecting us to go together now. <sighs> and it's interesting how Charlie responds. He doesn't say, I want to go. He says, we have to go. Everyone's expecting us to go together. So. It's, it's interesting how Charlie is, is kind of a master at like sidestepping how he feels about things. One of the times we saw it was when in one of the Paris episodes where they're, you know, in their little alcove near the vending machines and, you know, Nick brings up the subject of how stressed out Charlie's been and Charlie immediately like sidesteps to ask Nick, well, how are you feeling about your dad? So in this case, again, a very artful sidestep by Charlie where Nick's like, hey, you know, we we don't have to go. Would, would you rather we stay here and not go? And Charlie, instead of responding directly to that, is like, oh, we have to go. Everyone's expecting us, blah, blah, blah. The fact of the matter is, like, Charlie doesn't like to be the center of attention. But at the same time, he knows that this is an important moment for both him and Nick as kind of the moment where they stand up and are like, we are, we are boyfriends, everyone, behold. I think he sees it as an important milestone. Um, kind of similar to, like, earlier in the, in the season, they both had this kind of mental image of them being out in Paris and kissing on the Eiffel Tower and things like that. They were just things that it seemed like a queer couple should do when they were out and proud and happy. So I think this too is not a case of Charlie being like, yes, I want to go to the prom. It's more like this is something that an out and proud couple should do. So even now, he's kind of conforming to expectations instead of going with what he wants to do. And also I think part of it is that maybe he thinks this is what Nick wants or, you know, but it's definitely another case of Charlie, like, pushing down his own feelings in favor of what other people expect or what he thinks other people want. And a big public appearance as a couple, that's, that's definitely what we want. And Nick here checking in again. <laughs> and, like, you can just see, like, he's studying Charlie's expression. He's looking him straight in the eye and, like, trying to detect any hint of the fact that Charlie is not into this. <laughs> And then here we have this this like flash to again like this is how it should be or this is what it's supposed to be where they come in <laughs> i love i love the way they did this with like the stickers nick and charlie forever and the rainbow and the hearts and like everyone's cheering as they walk in so yeah so um in charlie's head like and we've spoken about charlie's ocd before and you know one of the things about OCD, of course, is, you know, needing to control things, but also having, like, a very set idea of how things are going to play out. So I think in Charlie's brain, this is how things are supposed to play out. Um, I'm not sure if he necessarily thinks that they will, but this is how they're supposed to go. I've, I'm pretty sure that most people watching this were filled with dread <laughs> right after realizing that that was uh, Charlie's imagination, because if they've shown this beautiful vision of how things are, we know that's not what we're going to get. But thankfully, this is not the kind of show that like, oh my god, like I, I, if you, if you have seen the original Queer as Folk, and I don't know what they did with the, with the newer Queer as Folk, if they followed the same storylines or not, I don't think so. But there is a prom scene that freaking traumatized me and many others. I could see people coming into this not knowing what kind of show Heartstopper is might wonder if we were going in that kind of direction, but thankfully, not the case. But it doesn't go how Charlie imagines. Yeah. 
And Charlie says he's sure, and he smiles, and Nick smiles, but then Charlie's smile kind of drops as they're gazing at each other, and we cut away after that. And then we have poor Tara, who's sitting in her bedroom, staring at her prom gown, um, not having heard from Darcy, which, like, the fact that Tara has not told anyone about this has got to have made everything so much more difficult, because she has no one to talk to about this, she has no one to confide in, she's worried, wondering if something's happened to Darcy, and, you know, just hoping that Darcy's gonna show up, but, you know, not knowing. Uh, we can see some of her other text messages to Darcy. Darcy, I really need your help. Where are you? That was the last one we saw. And then, did your mom do something? And then after that, whatever's happened, I'm here for you. And so here we have Darcy. We talked about last time the fact that, like, Darcy did reply to Nick's coming out Instagram post. So she clearly has her phone. Like, when I watched this the first time, and the second time, and the third time, uh, without having noticed that Darcy replied to him, I was under the assumption that she'd just left her phone behind. But apparently it had enough juice for her to reply, but then I guess it died. But the fact is that she could have contacted someone, but she chose not to. Which, you know, of course we under we know why later because she admits that she didn't want anyone to know. She didn't want Tara to, Tara to know. So poor Darcy at the park where she spent the night. Yeah, this is a very, sa very sad moment where Darcy is looking at, you know, a mother on the playground with her child. And, you know, the mother is comforting the child when the child is hurting. And, of course, Darcy also hurting but her mother is the one who hurt her and she feels like she too, just like Tara feels like she has no one to turn to right now. Darcy really feels like she has no one to turn to. The part of it is her own choice because she doesn't want to show this side of herself to Tara or to their friends. And like the fact that Darcy is wearing the suit that she was so happy about, that she picked out for prom, well that she and Tara picked out for prom, uh, and the reason why her mom kicked her out is just extra, extra heartbreaking. And then Tara says, please, please come to prom tonight. Okay, so we have Isaac looking at the flowered shirt that he wore in the first season, looking at various, various shirts, and then sits down on his bed to read. But this is one of those one of those situations where he can't read. You know, you know Isaac's going through it if he's like literally thrown a book. Like those things are sacred. So you know this scene is up to interpretation. But I I think I mean obviously Isaac is still kind of contemplating the things that he real that he's realizing about himself and the epiphany that he had talking to the Arrow Ace person at at L's art thing. And, like, I think it's important to note that just because you've had a moment of realization doesn't mean you don't doubt yourself and doesn't mean it won't take a while for you to come to terms with it. I'm sure every person is different, obviously, because we're all different in general. But, like, for me, I had the, real the moment of realization about being queer, the moment of realization about being trans several times and then would walk it back like re with regards to being queer when i was in college basically like it was a situation where at night like in the wee hours of night because in those days i was a night owl and would like stay up until four o'clock in the morning and then sleep but um at night i would be like oh my god i'm gay i'm so gay i'm definitely gay and then in the morning i would be like that was ridiculous that was just the ravings of a midnight lunatic. Clearly I am straight cis person. So, um, yeah, so just because you have that moment of realization doesn't mean that you can hold on to it and doesn't mean that you don't need time to come to terms with it and figure it all out and, you know, really own it and feel okay with it. I think that meeting the Arrowways person definitely, definitely gave Isaac a light bulb moment that he hadn't had before, but... Maybe this is him trying to come to terms with it or, you know, thinking it through. And the fact that he's going through 
different outfits is interesting because like outfits kind of represent the you that you show to the world the person that you choose to embody or choose to be and the fact that he's looking at things from his quote-unquote old life looking at the shirts that he's worn looking at you know books that have brought him comfort for his entire life and that he's probably used as an escape uh to escape from confronting who he is and what he feels you know, the fact that at this moment he, he kind of tosses them all aside shows that he's finally moving in a direction of self-discovery. So, it's good, ultimately. <laughs> and what are your intentions with my owl? Richard! Okay, so here we have Elle's parents uh, and her dad. You know, her dad kind of bullying Tao a little bit, asking, what are your intentions? And Tao looks very concerned. I'm joking! I'm joking! <laughs> and we all laugh awkwardly together. But if you're not back by 12, then you will be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Tao still is like, oh my god, get me out of here. <laughs> Elle, please rescue me. But yeah, I love the lighting in this in this moment where we have kind of the the late afternoon sun coming through the windows. It's all golden and beautiful. And then... We hear Elle's, Elle's shoes on the stairs and Young by Neon Capital, one of the songs that was used in the original trailers for season one, great, great song, starts playing. As Elle steps into view in a beautiful dress, just looking absolutely stunning. You look, you're, you're so, hello. I love this moment for Tao when he's like, you look, you're so, hello. <laughs> he just can't find the words, which I get it, buddy. She's stunning. You look pretty good too. And the fact that her, you know, we've, we've talked before about the fact that it's, it's really nice to see a show where there's a trans character whose entire storyline is not governed by trauma. And in Elle's case, she's just a girl who happens to be trans. I love that we get to see this quintessential, you know, teen movie moment, teen teen rom-com moment for Elle, where she gets to come down the stairs looking gorgeous, music plays, her date is stunned, her parents are proud and happy and tearful. And like, it's just wonderful to get to see her have this moment because like, one of the things about being trans is that you often don't get to have these moments. Uh, and that's true for being queer as well, like being queer or being trans, you sometimes don't get to have these quote unquote quintessential moments of like, you know, going to a dance with someone you like and that fact being celebrated. So yeah, it's, I love this for her. I love this for Elle. I love this for Tao. I love this for us, the viewers. Okay. And here we are at the prom. And Tara looks amazing in her dress, but is still very concerned about about Darcy, obviously. Welcome to the Truman Higgs Year 11 prom. Have fun and show off your date to the world. Yeah, that, that narration, show off your date to the world. Very, uh, very telling there where, again, we have like the idea of Nick and Charlie feeling like they have to do this public performative uh, thing in order to be officially boyfriends or something like that, or officially out. Here come Nick and Charlie, all holding hands. Oh my god! Oh my god, look oh at my you! My god. Suspended! Nick, who, you know, Tao's number one fan these days, uh, immediately looks at Tao and is like, oh my god, look at you! Suspenders! So Nick is so impressed by Tao's suspenders. <laughs> and here comes Isaac, looking awesome. Another bow tie. Sahar looks amazing. I love Sahar's sparkly purple dress. And, Wait, you yeah, I'm and we learned Sahar is playing guitar tonight with Baby Queen, which is very cool. Where's Darcy? Oh, uh, she's running late. It's so interesting that, like, Tara and Darcy are kind of unintentionally mirroring each other in their behavior where like something is really wrong but Darcy is not telling her friends or her girlfriend about it 
And for Tara, something is really wrong. Darcy is missing. And she's just keeping up that front that everything's okay and, like, trying not to make a big deal about it and just hoping that everything is going to turn out okay. Let's just go inside. Well, are you sure we can wait for her? No. Switch open a bit. Let's go. And Nick, who is so good at picking up on things, seems to sense that something is off. We see Nick looking back almost like he's looking for Darcy and kind of frowning, so... Definitely think he's picked up that something picked up on the fact that something is not quite right there. Oh, and he even pauses again to look back. And then in they go. Now <laughs> this is quite this is quite the transformation. <laughs> so like from how it looked uh, before the gang got there to how it looks now is like when you're watching one of those HGTV home renovation shows and like it's like five hours before the big reveal and nothing is done. And then they cut to the real reveal and like everything is perfect. And it's like, you you guys, I feel like I feel like we missed some things in between the last time you showed this to us. But regardless, like the place looks amazing. So Isaac walks off reading his book. I'm gonna have a look around for Darcy. Okay. Tara says she's gonna go look for Darcy, just to hoping that Darcy will just be meandering around the prom. And the drummer on stage yells for Sahar. So off Sahar goes, and we have Nick and Charlie left on their own, just kind of taking it in. And like in the dream vision that Charlie had of this moment, it was like everyone was watching as they walked in and like, but here they kind of enter and no one's really paying attention to them. So they're just kind of taking in the scene. And like, <laughs> I'm sure there's a certain sense of like, are we sure we really want to do this? They both kind of take a deep breath and then Nick takes Charlie's hand and it's kind of the feeling of like, you know, we can do this together. So we have a photographer and a very nice backdrop uh, with a rainbow right in the center, which is lovely. I love this second pose they go for. <laughs> Tao being extra as usual. I can't believe Nick showing off his boyfriend, but none of you managed to bring a girl. Harry, as per usual, is making fun of people for the number one reason why he makes fun of people, which is their lack of a romantic relationship. So here, <laughs> it's it's interesting to note that like he he's learned that his social capital will not rise if he is a homophobic piece of crap. Uh, so he has decided not to be homophobic, but he's still being a, a bit of a dick because he's making fun of his friends for not having dates. It's good that Harry is not picking on Nick and Charlie. They are not the focus of his bullying in this moment, but he's still being a dick. So like, <laughs> I'll be interested to see where they go with him in the next season because, you know, for those who have read the Nick and Charlie novella, we know we see kind of a different side of him where he's not such a dick. So, you know, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, when Nick, when Nick and Charlie, I'm sure like the second they hear his voice, both of them are like, oh God, what's, what's, what's he going to say? But he doesn't, he doesn't bully them. He just walks on. Oh, I don't want one. Why is it, why not? Because it's so embarrassing just standing there on my own. I, I do, I do wonder what, what they were thinking in terms of like encouraging Isaac to go get a solo prom pick with him and his book. So it's good. It's nice that they do kind of the OG gang uh, picture there. You're right, Nick. And then this gives a chance for our rugby lads, Cy, Christian, and Otis to come up to Nick. You've been me. Too busy hanging out with your boyfriend. And like the way that the way that Cy says this, too busy hanging out with your boyfriend, it's like the inflection is very much how Harry might have said it, or how someone who is trying to bully him for being queer might have phrased it or might have spoken it. So like I, for a minute there, even though I knew that the rugby boys were were supportive, for a minute there hearing that, you're kind of like, oh my god, is this going to go really badly? And Nick looks really concerned. But luckily, Christian jumps in. For once, Christian is the one saving it. Sorry if we made you feel weird about telling us. <laughs> I can't believe Nick's the first hour of us in a relationship. <laughs> you see kind of the relief on Nick's face, realizing like, oh, okay, no, they're, they're cool with it, it's fine. I could easily have a girlfriend any day now. It's Tara Jones single. <laughs> Oh, Christian. <laughs> I feel like Christian and Imogen have similar uh, similar gaydar or similar romantic interests 
they're just drawn to the queer folks. She's gay. Everyone knows this. Come on, man. And <laughs> notice is like, she's gay. Everyone knows this. <laughs> okay, so, you know. You know. Yeah, so some of the things that Nick and Charlie were afraid of were, you know, the reception to them showing up to the prom together. So I'm sure Harry was something they were afraid of. For Nick in particular, I'm sure he was afraid of Harry's reaction. He was afraid of his friend's reaction. But here we've just checked both of them off. You know, Harry has been a dick, but not a homophobic dick, at least. And the rugby lads, uh, with a slightly shaky beginning, have also shown that they're completely fine with it. And everything's cool. So good <laughs> okay, and we have tara searching searching for darcy and nick kind of catches sight of her and goes after her it's kind of an interesting parallel to episode three of season one uh at harry's party where nick also in that case is you know kind of fighting his way through a crowd and sees tara in that case he sees tara and darcy that's an important turning point for him where it kind of gives him the courage to take things to the next level with Charlie. So now, once again, he's kind of working his way through the crowd. He sees Tara, but Darcy is not there. And this time, he's able to provide some support for Tara. Aw, and Tara saying, Darcy, I'm scared. Where are you? What's wrong? What's happening? I'm pretty sure Nick, Nick sensed from the start that something was off, like, in the way that he reacted to Tara saying, like, oh, she's just running late, we can go in without her, blah, blah, blah. So now he's, you know, he's really, it's really clear to him that something's wrong. I know something's wrong, but she never wants to talk about it. How do you talk to someone about something that they don't want to talk about? Both Nick and Tara having similar problems here. Darcy not wanting to talk about the things that hit too close to home for her, which in her case are her homophobic parents, or at least her homophobic mom, and everything she goes through there, and Charlie not wanting to talk about the bullying and his trauma and his eating disorder and everything he's dealing with. So it's it's good. Like, I love the friendship of Nick and Tara, but it's especially good here that they're able to kind of connect in this moment when they're both having the same problem. And I think that, like, Nick saying what he says to Tara helps her move forward and figure out what to do next with Darcy. And saying that to her helps Nick realize that, yes, he needs to do the same thing with Charlie. Maybe you just have to try, yeah, even if it doesn't work. And then we have a very nice hug here. And who better to hug than Nick Nelson when you're having a bad day? I mean, or even if you're having a good day, just in general. And Tara goes off and Nick watches her go. I'm sure thinking about his own things with Charlie and also worrying about her. And here comes Baby Queen! So Tao drags Elle onto the dance floor. And there's a convenient, like, circle of space right in the middle for them to occupy. And they freaking kill it, even though Tao's being an absolute dork, like, pretending to reel Elle in with a fishing rod. <laughs> It's wonderful to see them just being so unselfconscious in this moment because, like, it didn't seem like they had really told anyone that they were going out aside from their friends. So kind of similar to how this is Nick and Charlie's first big, like, out appearance, this is Tao and Elle's first big appearance as boyfriend and girlfriend as well. So the fact that, like, they're just unselfconsciously joyfully dancing with each other just having a great time is really great to see i do love that they didn't just suddenly become like perfect choreographed dancers like some other shows might have done but like tao is still a big old dork doing this move and reeling l in and all the stuff so it's nice to see that you know it's it's realistic and the line that plays while they're kissing is, I promise that I'll run away with you. Right before Elle tells Tao that she's going to leave, go to Lambert. I'm gonna go to Lambert. It's really cool also that like, it's this moment of having such a beautiful, joyful time with Tao, kissing him, having that just quintessential teenage, you know, prom experience that Elle is like, yeah, I know what I want to do. I want to go to Lambert. Hello. And Tao, of course, has known this the whole time and is like, 
and he looks sad, but he, he genuinely wants what's best for Elle, which is a beautiful conclusion. Not really conclusion, but is a beautiful moment in Tao's arc of coming from being a person with selfish tendencies who comes to the point of being able to unselfishly be completely fine with the person he loves doing what makes her happiest, even when it's not with him and doesn't align with what he wants. And the butterflies are neon this time, and they go back to dancing. And that's where we're going to call it for now, I think. So next time... <laughs> we've barely made any headway here. <laughs> is this going to be a... Is it... Well, knock down thing. Is this going to be a four-parter? Is that where we're heading? I don't know. But, um, but yeah. So next time, we will have uh, Isaac taking a step forward. We'll have Imogen, Imogen having a very interesting moment. And then of course we'll have the prom after party and Nick and Charlie's discussion in that last scene. Yeah, okay, so that's where we're gonna leave it off for now. Uh, thank you so much for watching as always. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you like about this section? What are your thoughts? Etc. 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 And I hope to have the next one done sooner than this one, but it's hard to tell. Things, life keeps conspiring against me. I will get it done as quickly as I can. All right. Well, thank you as always to our patrons who are absolutely ridiculously amazing. And special shout out to our Nick Nelson members, Kelly Walker, Paul Z, and Kent Smither. All right. So I'll see you guys next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day or night or whatever time of day it may happen to be. And I'll see you next time. I said that already. I'll see you again. <laughs> okay. Bye. No, that's weird. Okay, bye. That was also weird. <laughs> okay, bye.